Um, sorry, if you're thinking, Diego, you're stalling, give the microphone to Christoph. Um, I can't do that. See, I am also a designer, and he is a better designer than I am. So as soon as I pass the mic off to him, he's going to show me up. And I am much too proud for that. Actually, we were just stalling for our uh, video guy who just got back. So I can go ahead and pass this off. And he's actually not better than me. So I, I'm not ashamed to pass this off to him. No, I'm just kidding. He's fantastic, Christoph. Um, he's going to talk with us about crypto, UX design. Crypto means cryptography. Re, not cryptocurrency. But um, he's, he's not going to talk with, with us about cryptography, UX design, even though that needs severe overhauls as well. Um, so I'm going to pass this off. Are we ready over there? Yay. Yeah. Okay. We are set to go. Why don't you, why don't we give him a big, great big hand as he talks about this cool little thing. Hey everyone. Can you hear me? Can you hear me all right? Is this better? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, here we go. Okay. So crypto UX design. Who here is a designer who does some, okay, awesome. Thanks for being here. There are very few of us. Um, so Generally, this, is, you know, this talk will be super not technical at all. The main goal of what I do is just make things generally easier and more pleasant to use. Uh, sounds kind of fluffy, but really there's a lot more to it. Because usually you look at very specific user flows, like how people use things, how do they think about things, who they are, what they're trying to achieve. Like here's kind of a typical usage life cycle. So everybody, let's say everybody who uses Monero, at some point they don't know what Monero is. They're unaware. Then they find out what it is. Then maybe they get interested. Maybe they try it out for the first time. And maybe they become regular users. So at each point of, those, uh, of this cycle, they need different types of information. They have different types of problems. And if you design the whole experience from, let's say, a, a website or what they see on Reddit to, the, to the, uh, m the wallet itself, then there's a much better chance that they can actually make sense of things and make, uh, can make really good decisions and actually keep their privacy intact, not lose their keys, not lose their money, and all of these things. Um, my my pretty much all of my work with cryptocurrencies has been with Monero. And um, particularly this GUI wallet. Who knows? Who uses the desktop GUI wallet? Awesome. Some people? And uh, generally, I hadn't done anything in open source. The way I got into it was I heard about cryptocurrencies. I was kind of curious. I didn't know anything. And one evening, I somehow stumbled across the Monero website. And I downloaded the wallet. And this is what I saw, and I was, I had no idea what was going on. I had set up my wallet, I had my seed, and then it told me the demon is synchronizing, and there are like 1.3 million remaining blocks. I just assumed this would take like three minutes, and then it would just be done, and I could just, you know, come back and use this awesome wallet. But it turned out it didn't, it didn't quite work that way, so... Um, I was waiting around, waited like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I thought, okay, this is what this wallet looks like. I'll just hop in my design tool and I'll just restyle it, just see what happens. Um, it, this whole thing took like 10 hours total. I didn't work on it that long, but like until 2 in the morning. And I thought, okay, I'm going to go to bed. What do I do with my design? I'll just post it on Reddit. And I did. This is what it uh, looked like. That was like late 2017. I just thought, okay, cool. I made this anyways. Just, what do you think? And then... Um, this guy over here contacted me, DSC, and said, hey, I want to I I implement this. And I thought, OK, cool, let's do it. And uh, he has been the biggest help ever in helping me understand all this stuff, help me figure out how to do design and open source and executing everything. So he's been super awesome. And then over uh, the next month, uh, I tried to flesh out the, the visual styling. So there was a dark theme and the light theme. It's pretty stark, the colors, which I like to think that reflect the, uh, yeah, what's up? The problem I solved with this was, um, so two things. This was a, as you can see here in the title, it's a restyling, it's not a redesign. So it was basically just to create a solid visual UI style that could be applied everywhere. So things look consistent, there's a nice component set. And I intentionally, because I didn't know what the functionality, how it worked, I just thought I'll keep the functionality the same. And then after uh, fleshing out all of this stuff, 
created you know this component set with all the nice little button variations and uh, you know the card up there that shows your how much Monero you have and all this stuff. That's when uh, the next step was to get into more of the actual design work. So, um, for example, we tackled the onboarding. We r there's a whole flow. The first time you set up your wallet, there are some very crucial moments, like writing down your seed. Those need to be really, the explanations need to be very clear. People really need to understand what they're doing and how to do it really well, because it's, there's no reset password if you lose your seed. It just doesn't exist, and it's really unexpected. So we went through, and um, after the restyling was done, to tackle the functionality and make that easier uh, for people. So this is, for example, the recovery phrase. We added these little numbers. You can, instead of telling people, you know, grab a piece of paper and write it down, which then, you know, everybody takes a post-it and it forgets it somewhere. There's a template you can print out, and it looks nice, and you can write your seat down. It's easier. Um, so we tackled these things. There was uh, some other work. I saw that the transaction flow involved six overlays, and they all looked totally different. So it just made everything a lot more consistent. There were some, there were some details in here, like the transaction was created before you could review your transaction. So it just made that just have to cr uh, create the transaction, do that processing while you're reviewing your transaction. So you don't have to wait around. You don't have to look at a spinner. So a lot of detail stuff just to make everything just easier, smoother. Um, I skip that one. I can't. So this is one of the example where, you know, just pick one flow, try to make it easier. There's a merchant page. This is really just kind of an exploration. So if anybody wants to create a really awesome point of sale merchant system in the Monero GUI and wants to develop that, please take those designs. DSC is uh, way too busy with so many other things. Um, this, is a, this was a recent very interesting conversation. There's kind of, there are really split opinions about accounts. Some people think, hey, we should just support 50 accounts out of the box. Other people say, no, nobody uses accounts. One is enough. Other people say, hey, we should kind of think about how you, people use bank accounts. There's like a savings one. There's a uh, checking or you know, long-term savings, daily expenses, this type of stuff. So. Um, and it's kind of unresolved. That's where we would really need some user testing and some, some user surveys to figure out how people actually use this thing. Because it really changes how you would design it. If we assume people use only two accounts, then we can have a, a big dashboard that just shows them, and you just pick the one you want to use. Question? Sorry? That depends. There, there, are, there are two things. Um, how do people generally want to use it? Like, what's their intuition? How do they do their personal financial planning, which is not really a cryptocurrency question. It's a, just a general, how do people organize things? Then you could attack it from the other perspective. What is a good system that we want to present to people that allows them to, for example, separate their finance for best... Uh, for best privacy and protection, you know, do you want you know, uh, people to use sub addresses or accounts, or do you want people to? Sorry, too much. Okay, cool. Um, a mobile concept that was really just for fun, um, side exploration. This was some user testing I did in March. Question. Um, Partially, yes and no, because so this was actual user testing. There's like a uh, was an event. There were seven random people that used the wallet for like ten minutes each, and I gave them uh, a task. They said, "So you uh, you paid somebody lunch. They want to pay you back in uh, Monero. So download the wallet, set it up, and find your address." Fairly straightforward. There's actually a lot going on because they move from unaware to aware to interested to first use through all of these steps, and. People really struggled, but not with kind of the things you would expect. People struggled finding the download page. The download page itself had like 200 options of what you can download, and the buttons weren't clear. They were kind of underlined, and there was all kinds of stuff going on. The checksums were there, and people were like, what's this? Um, so there were all kinds of surprises in there. And uh, so there's that type of user research, which is just random people, but there's also the type of user research which is paying attention to Reddit and see what people say. 
So coming up with a concept, putting it on Reddit, gathering feedback, um, or just seeing what discussions are out there, like this uh, account discussion, how many accounts do we want? That was really driven by uh, paying attention over time and just seeing what people talk about and then reacting to that. But yeah, there should be a lot, lot more uh, user testing and user research, uh, which I think is just not that common in open source, I think. Um, like one of the things that came up in user testing, people create their account, they come here. But you created your account, you don't have anything to send. This is the send page. Why do we get to the send page? And it doesn't tell you it's the send page, so people were just stuck. How am I doing time-wise? Okay. Um, so the, you know what I just said, this led to a redesign of the download page. So instead of just listing out all the download options, it was about just tell me this is what the wallet looks like. These are the key features. If you want to use it for casual purpose, here are some features. If you're a power user, here are some features. And if you want to use it for business, it's not the best, but there are some features, and here's kind of how you can use them. So focusing on uh, how people want to use it instead of um, just download options and just generic lists of features. Um, all my designs are, for the other designs out there, I always try to keep them open source also. Open source and design is really tricky. The tools don't really support that. There's no workflow like Git and GitHub have, or like developers have come up with. Um, so I kept sketch files on uh, GitHub for a long time. I recently moved to uh, something else, another tool called Figma because they are, I talked to them and they're trying to more actively support open source. So they came up with a thing where you can have public files and other people can duplicate them. So all my designs are in this file. You can duplicate it, you can drag components around and just mess with anything you want and then tell me, like, hey, I made something better, put it in there. Uh, and there is no process for collaborating yet. It's just very, very slow steps. And I think for once, is design, design tools just have never worked that way, and also designers' mentality, they just don't think that way. Because in, if you open a design tool, you start with a blank canvas, and you start drawing lines and blazing text. It's just not the same structure that code and, and code libraries and all these things bring. So it's, it's tricky, but maybe we'll get there long term. Um, there was a fun project. I, uh, DSC sent me Monero at some point, and he sent me a link to Explorer, like, hey, here's proof of your payment. And I saw a page that looked like a Sudoku puzzle or something. I had no idea what was going on. So I thought, I don't get explorers. So, because it's just numbers. So I created my own design and developed it. And I changed it around and said, you know, what do you want to do? Like, here's the things you can do with an explorer. What do you want to do? I want to verify a transaction. Just uh, a lot more straightforward in what people want to do. And the awesome Monero community translated it in eight different languages, which was super awesome, totally unprompted. So thank you very much for everybody who did that. And if you want to translate more, please feel to do so. And um, while I learned all this stuff, I thought like, there's so much UX work that has to be done. There are probably other designers out there. I should just write down all the things that I've learned. And that's what I did. Uh, call it the Crypto UX Handbook, and uh, I try to make, keep it fairly, fairly simple. There are things about how to, how to think about UX design, like the user cycle that I talked about earlier, uh, basic uh, walkthroughs over how transactions work, how keys work, all these things, and lots of examples because I tried out probably 100 different uh, wallets, so I took lots of screenshots and put them in there. And it's also completely open for contributions. Anybody who wants to help out, change things. There are probably lots of things I got wrong. So let me know which ones they are. And uh, because I think it would be awesome. Traditionally, I've, in my experience, designers have been kind of protective of their design. But it would be awesome if there was more openness and sharing and collaboration around it. I hope uh, that's along with you know, making more narrow UX really good, that's kind of the second thing that I uh, hope to, to push forward a little bit. And these are all the places you can find me. And any more, do we have time for questions? Any questions? Yes, uh, you were first. Yeah, please go ahead. Um, is Monero paying you for UX design or is this your free time? 
Um, so the first year and a half or so, I just did it because I wanted to, and I thought Monero has a really cool core, in both in terms of technology and the people around it. And then I dared to create a CCS, that's what it's called, right? Community proposal. So I said, hey, here's all the stuff that I've done. There's a lot more to do. Here are the things that I would like to achieve. Please donate. And then people were very happy to, to uh, or they donated. I hope they were happy to donate. Um, thank you to everybody who did. And then uh, I did that work, and then I got that uh, payout. So it was, uh, was a really smooth experience. It was really awesome. I don't know how common that is in other open source projects, though. Uh, you had a question? Uh, yeah, thank you for sharing your experiences. I just wanted to know how did you measure uh, your success, your success of the uh, of the redesign or rethinking of the visual processes of the UX? That is process? that is a really hard question. So I've worked. The the funny thing is, while I did a lot of this stuff, I worked with a startup that had an insane amount of data on everything. We did A/B tests, like change this, and two percent more people convert. And then it's like, Monero, we have nothing. We don't want anything. We don't want to collect any data. There's no tracking in Explore Monero too. I have no people. And I wrote that on the About page. I don't know how many people visit. If you want this to be better, you have to tell me because I don't want to know. And I think that's a really awesome thing about Monero, that there's not this hoarding of data. So the, I mean, my best access is really user testing, showing people, having conversations, but also always putting things on Reddit where the community hangs out and just um, just, just be very, very clear. Like I, I don't just post a design. I'll post a video where I explain my thinking and what I, how I think it could work, what different solutions are, and just try to get people involved in the process, and then hopefully the end result is good. But yeah, that's a, that's a hard one. I think we kind of have to go back to back to basics if we, wanna, if we don't want to have all this intrusive tracking. We need to just talk to people, which with Monero is, of course, harder because people like to be anonymous. So not easy. One more question. Have you thought about creating use cases and posting them on Reddit and collecting opinions or something like that? Have not thought about it. It's a good idea. Let's talk about it afterwards. Because you said um, UX uh, or design is n not really common in open source project, not in all, but in most of them not. Did you find other designers who uh, you could exchange like experiences or insights or stuff like that? Very few. Diego here is an ultra master here. He, kn he knows a lot. There are very few. Um, I found a lot in the Ethereum community for some reason. They have these groups because I think what is it, con consensus? They hired a thousand people or so, so they were just they're just designers in there and they talk about things. Um, but otherwise, very few. I also did a presentation last year. I'm doing another presentation in a month uh, about to a UX meetup, and uh, just talking a little bit about kind of the technical side, a little bit about my experiences. And uh, interestingly, the most of the questions were about uh, they were like, "What do you get feedback on Reddit? Why would you post your stuff on Reddit? What do people say? Like, how do you how do you make decisions?" It wasn't really about the technology or cryptocurrencies or or uh, the, the details of this work. It was just about like, how do you even work that way? But yeah, and that's I'm, I try to, but little success so far. Could be me though. Cool. All good. Let's give, let's give Christoph a hand. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that with us.